let's race forward and talk to Hunter Woodhall, a Paralympian who is a recent graduate at the University of Arkansas. With two prosthetic legs, Hunter competes in track and field professionally, overcoming all odds stacked against him. Yeah, I think my life has been kind of a roller coaster of ups and downs, just figuring out a way to kind of navigate through life and, and figure out one, like where I want to be and two, like how I'm going to get there. And for me, like the biggest thing has really been the people surrounding me. I mean, this is like a journey where it's, it's definitely not easy, but it makes it a lot harder when you're doing it by yourself. So just having that really strong support group around me, whether it was like my, my family when I was really young and, and, you know, kind of that friend group I created as I got older. And now it's like the team and the staff and the people around me that are kind of pushing me towards, you know, that end goal. Um, has really helped and it's one of those things where um, track is an individual sport so it's very easy to see one person and, and directly connect that with what happens like on the big stage but at the end of the day like there's thousands and thousands of hours before that where there's other people and there's other you know things going on where it's very much not individual so I would accredit a lot of it to just like a really amazing group of people that surround me and what I do. For the trials, I'm going to be competing in the 100 and the 400, so I um, haven't really competed in the 100 in like big events like this, and I think I just want to kind of show what I'm capable of, and I, I'm hoping to surprise some people, so I'm pretty excited about that. And then the 400 has always been my premier event, so I'm um, excited to kind of come back and, and you know regain the, the respect in, in, in my event, as, as I'd like to call it. <laughs> So when I was born, I was actually born with a birth defect, which basically just made my legs in a way that I uh, wasn't going to be able to walk. And that's kind of what doctors originally told my parents. Um, so I had my feet, but they were deformed, they were fused, so there just wasn't really a clear option on what to do. And my parents, while I was really young, went through a lot of different specialists and doctors and kind of landed on amputation being the best option for, for me and, and the possibility of living kind of a normal life. So. When I was a year old, I had both of my legs amputated, and four months later, I got my first pair of prosthetics. And, and growing up, I had two older brothers, and it was kind of, um, you know, a part of my life to just kind of follow in their footsteps and be like them. And, and luckily, my family was really into sports and, and activities, so um, that's kind of where you know I found my start. And up until fifth grade, I was homeschooled, so I really was kind of in this close knit group of people and. and that's kind of as far as I got out. Um, in fifth grade, I went to public school and, and went through a lot of bullying and, and difficult times just because um, you know, I was a young kid and I was very different than everyone else. And I think that's just a way for kids to kind of you know, uh, outsource their anger and frustration with everything else. So I was in a really confused place and going into junior high, I was still kind of in that spot and that's where I found track. Um, I had a few other friends that, that ran track and, and somewhere where I felt comfortable. And, uh, for the first time in my life, like it was, it was a sport where uh, it was up to me to decide what happened. Like I didn't have to rely on a coach to play me and not send me on the bench. And the track was a place where I really got to see like the work I put in and the result that came out of it. And it was kind of just up to me. So I felt like I had control over what I was doing, and I really fell in love with the sport. And um, at the time, I was definitely not good. I was back of the pack, but. Um, like I said, it was something I really enjoyed, so just working, working through that and continuing to get better and then uh, coming into high school I started to see some you know, progress and started to get better and be more competitive and um, going into my uh, junior year I actually competed in my first world championships and then the following year I competed in, in Rio in 2016. Um, I was the youngest competitor in my event and won a bronze and silver medal. And then going into my senior year, he was one of the top able-bodied competitors in the world and in the country. And um, the recruiting process is really difficult going to college because it's always been a big dream of mine, but no double MBT had ever done it. So there was a lot of gray area on kind of what was accepted and, and who was going to do what. So it was really difficult to kind of move forward with that process and get a school to really kind of stick their neck out and take a chance on me. And when I visited Arkansas, that's really what they portrayed. Because they were just they're here for me as more than just an athlete, but as a person. They wanted to uh, see me get better, and they were willing to, um, you know, put their money where their mouth is and, and really stick up for me and fight for me. And so, I, yeah, I committed to Arkansas, and I've had, um, you know, challenging last four years with with the pandemic and everything going on, but a really amazing and rewarding experience. 
experience um, being a part of the program.